So hi, Micropunter here, and one of my most watched videos in this channel are the 10 things that I wish that I knew uh, before starting microscopy as a hobby. And uh, for this reason, I decided to do today another 10 point video, and this is about the 10 most uh, common mistakes that beginners make. Every now and then I do make uh, more advanced videos and today I will dedicate this video to the learners and to the beginner beginners of microscopy because after all there are also many students out there who will use microscopes in their lessons, in their biology lessons and then I hope that this video might also help them a little bit. But I'm gonna start off uh, right away and we're gonna do a countdown from 10. No specific order here, but these are the 10 most common mistakes that I've seen my students make in the microscopy lab. So let's start off uh, with number 10. Some people like to start microscopy by using the high power objective. And this is uh, bad for several reasons. The high power objectives, for example, 10 times, uh, 40 times, and even heaven forbid, 100 times oil, these high power objectives have a very, very low depth uh, of field. And this means that it is very difficult to get the specimen in focus. What you have to do is, is you always have to start with a four times uh, objective. This has the advantage of a large depth of field. This means that the image, even if the image is thicker, all parts will be in focus and you can also see much more of the specimen and this allows you to center the image much more. So always start with low power and then work yourself upwards. And if you lose the focus with a high power, start again from low power. You'll be much faster. Another problem, number nine, not centering the slide before using. Oh, they raise their hand and ask, me, well, I cannot see anything. And then I look at it, well, you're not looking at the specimen, you're looking at the label. Uh, it sounds a little bit funny, but it's uh, more common than you might think. Um, always uh, check that the actual specimen is right over the condenser's lens um, and is illuminated and then you should be fine. And then you start observing with a low power objective. Yeah, but always check first uh, using uh, your eye whether the specimen is in the middle. So problem number eight, uh, beneath the microscope there is um, an optical system called the condenser. I can, sh can show it over here, it's down here. Um, and you can open and close the condenser diaphragm by moving a lever horizontally. And one of the biggest mistakes is, is that people start microscopy with the condenser fully open. This gives a lot of light but it also reduces contrast quite a bit and it also uh, really decreases the depth of field. So it's very difficult to focus. My suggestion is, is that when you start uh, with the four power, uh, low power objective, close the condenser all the way. It will be a little bit darker, but you'll ab you're able to see the specimen much better. And then when you've got everything in focus. So problem number seven is actually a quite a, hmm, a problematic one is, is that sometimes people who are not very experienced with microscopes, they will use the non-oil immersion objectives with immersion oil and this can actually damage the objectives. Um, usually it is the, 10, the 100 times oil um, immersion objectives that can be used with immersion oil. It has the word oil written on it and only that objective can be used with oil. What happens is, is uh, you have to put a drop of immersion oil on the slide, on, on the specimen slide, and then you rotate the objective directly into the immersion oil. This means that the objective itself will be covered with oil and you later you have to clean it. Um, this uh, oil immersion objective actually requires this oil um, to give you the best uh, image quality. Um, but sometimes people yeah, either accidentally or deliberately also use the 40 times objective with immersion oil. Uh, yeah, and that's then a the problem. So once you've used the uh, oil on the 100 times oil immersion objective, don't rotate the 40 times objective uh, back into position. Otherwise you might get it covered with oil and you won't see anything anyway because there is a layer of oil on the specimen slide. So yeah, once you used oil, that's it. You gotta clean the objective and also the slide and then you can start again with a low power. Problem number six is actually even worse, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> is this, uh, if you confuse the immersion oil with mounting medium. The mounting medium is used to make a permanent slide and the mounting medium turns solid. And now some people confuse mounting medium and immersion oil and then they will put uh, the mounting medium on the slide and then they will rotate the oil immersion objective into the mounting medium. 
And this is a real problem. It has happened before as, as well. And ever since then, we are, we've removed mounting medium and immersion oil from uh, the lab uh, where we educate students so that this mistake cannot happen anymore. Uh, if you uh, get your objective covered with mounting medium, you have to give it actually a proper cleaning. You might have to use alcohol to completely remove it. And then I'm not even sure if you're able to remove everything. So that's something that you sh really should avoid. In worst case, you just have to buy yourself a new objective. Yeah, and that can become expensive. So mistake number five can also damage the objective. And that is, is when you use the coarse focus knob, which is the big one. Okay, over here we can see one. The coarse focus knob, if you use that with the high power objectives. Because this can actually cause the objectives to crash into the specimen slide. Um, yeah, it can damage the objective and of course also the slide. And it's especially bad if uh, you've uh, crashed into it and then if you start to move the slide horizontally because this can actually scratch uh, the objective. Luckily, um, some uh, high power objectives have are spring loaded. This means that the front part of the objective retracts when you contact the slide. Uh, yeah, but I think uh, this is only an emergency solution and you should definitely not use the coarse focus. Only use uh, the fine focus knob for the high power objectives. This is the small one. It raises the stage only slightly. Yeah, problem number four is another uh, focusing problem. Um, sometimes uh, students or beginners, they lose the focus. Uh, and what they do is, is to try to regain the focus by quickly spinning the fine focus knob. They, they spin it and they cannot find the focus and they turn it back 10 times, 15 times, 20 times the other direction. No, don't do that. Um, if you lose the focus, what you do is, is you simply rotate the low power four times objective into position and then you use the coarse focus knob to focus. Yeah. That's much faster than trying to find uh, the focus by spinning the fine focus knob. So the next one again, a condenser problem. Some people like to use the condenser to control light intensity. And so as I already told you, if you move the condenser lever back and forth, uh, this uh, opens and closes the diaphragm, which is used to control contrast and also depth of field. But some people use this uh, exclusively only uh, to control light. Uh, what you should do is, is you should use uh, the light intensity knob that you have over here on the side to increase the light. And only if this is not enough because the specimen is too dark, only then you will open the condenser more um, yeah, to allow, allow more or less light. Well, actually, strictly speaking, the condenser should be uh, adjusted in such a way that uh, the, uh, it, the setting it corresponds to the setting um, to the uh, objective that you're using. So mistake number two is not keeping your microscope covered like I've done over here. Uh, I think dust is one of the biggest enemies of a microscope. Um, if uh, there is dust uh, on the condenser system um, or, or maybe um, even on the eyepieces, then this can really reduce uh, the image quality quite a lot. My suggestion is, is that you use compressed air, but not of a commercial um, yeah, can where you, which you use to remove the dust of a computer because this contains also other additives. But if you're able to obtain clean compressed air, then uh, this is, can be used to remove the worst dust. Generally, um, if you keep it covered, uh, yeah, it should be much uh, better. But uh, otherwise, you also have to use a brush that's also possible yeah, or a small bulb that uh, you can compress uh, to blow off the air. There are a variety of possibilities here. Um, yeah, but uh, it's not always necessary to use alcohol to give everything a cleaning, but uh, simply to remove the excess dust is a good thing. Uh, yeah, but keep it covered to prevent dust from the first place. So and the last uh, point is actually one that is especially important if you have a microscope uh, operated with a halogen light bulb is, is you always have to turn um, down the light intensity when you switch off the microscope so that when you switch it on, that the light intensity is set to low. And this is really important because otherwise you might break your lamp. Uh, the reason is, is if the lamp is cold and if it is set to high and if you turn it on, then this is the time when most of the lamps are able to break because the lamp is cold and has a very low resistance. Therefore, the current is high and this can actually destroy the lamp. A little bit of physics here. So my suggestion is, is always turn it down. And also um, it prevents you being blinded um, if it's set too high and if you switch on the microscope. So that's, I think, uh, yeah, the, I would say the 10 most common problems that I have encountered over the last couple of years with people, beginners uh, who start to use microscopes. I hope that this video was a little bit useful for you. Well, do please consider subscribing. Check out all of the, um, uh, the details that I have in the description below. I have a podcast uh, of, on my website that you want, uh, might want, be interested in. Yeah, and many other resources as well. 
and of course my main YouTube channel which is simply called Microbe Hunter where I'm actually putting a lot of specimens under the microscope. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye bye.